So the queen of dental hygiene is in the house again. Barbara, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. What we want to focus in on today is this really provocative video that uh, you sent over. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. And while, okay. that's, while that's popping up, I want to say uh, an extra large congratulations again on winning this top hygienist award. Just give us a quick thumbnail on what that award was. It was the Hugh Freedy ADHA, so the American Dental Hygiene Association's Master Clinician. And it was, it's the, they give out two clinician awards and that was the top clinician. And I'm just so honored. It was, it was exciting. We're and, so proud of you. Yeah. yeah. But way to go. Um, so Barbara, for those who don't know, Barbara has a microscope in her operatory in the dental office there. It's a holistic or integrative dental practice in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And um, what we're talking about here before we show this video is um, your belief in biocidin and dental sidin yeah. to help modulate the microbiome of the mouth, which yes. is, the in, is the beginning point. It's the entry point for the GI biome. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that the medical people are – beloved medical colleagues in the integrative space are doing a ton of stool analysis, but that's the colon, right? That, that's not really a reflection of the small intestine. Yeah. People like us are starting to use companies like oral DNA to look way upstream at the beginning mm -hmm. at the oral microbiome. So in essence, we have this GI track bookended with a evaluation of the biome, mm -hmm. but really what we want is a reflection of what's going on in between, right? That small intestine right. where the villi are dynamically interfacing mm -hmm. with the foods we consume. Yes. And so this video, what you're going to show is exciting about the upstream bookend, the mouth and how biocidin and then dental sidin may be modulating it. So as I roll mm -hmm. this, uh, will you just give us a kind of a voiceover here of, of what exactly you did? Sure. So on every patient, I take a plaque sample and put it on a slide with saline solution and look at it with my patients. Because in a healthy mouth, you're going to have no bacterial activity. It's going to be cocci, uh, no spirochetes, no rods, very few white blood cells and red blood cells. I want, I want a nice, quiet Saturday afternoon at the park. Yeah, so walk us through this. This is, this is a patient's mouth. Yes, and it's full of activity. You can see the rods and the spinning rods, the gliding rods, yep, long rods. It's just, it's thumping. It's active. And, it, and this correlates with what I see clinically um, as far as the gums and the bleeding and the plaque level and just the, the, the state of disease in this person's mouth. And then I did it. Give a, us a profile on, give us a profile on this patient particularly. And then how did, where did this come from and how did you collect the sample? Well, I just, uh, you know, it's a mid forties patient um, and he has periodontal disease and I was able to just take a plaque sample. I take it from three different areas below the gum line, you know, in the mouth and mostly by the molars and in the bicuspid areas and just and then I put it all together on a slide and I divided that chunk of plaque that I got in two okay. and so I had right next to it the um, the control sample which is what I do with everyone and then I divided the other half and put it on the the other side of the slide coming with, up now here okay yes with biocidin and I mixed I just put biocidin right on top and and then sealed okay. slides glue them and and this biocidin slide it just blew me away you know how quickly it worked and how effectively it just killed 90 percent of the bacteria and the pathogen so, um, amazing i mean this is this is the slide where yeah. you were, were here what's the time between this and how long had the biocidin been in contact with this plaque sample? Probably about 20 minutes because I do the slide at the beginning of the appointment. And then after my work, we look at it on the way out. So, so 20, 30 minutes. What, give us a sense of what this person, this patient 
what was their home program like and how many times had you seen them? Is this somebody who's getting a lot of deep scaling and root planing type therapy? Um, this is a, a patient that I will be doing more gum therapy on. I mean, they were fairly new to the practice and because their gums were infected and, and I knew I'd get a good sample, like, hmm, let's see what biocidin will do. So, I mean, this patient, you know, does floss and does use a Sonicare, but this bacteria is deeper than they can go with those tools. And the infection is, is down under the gum line. And you got to go there. You got to go where the bacteria live. Um, had they, ha this patient, um, did they have multiple periodontal pockets greater than four millimeters? Yes, yes. You know, in, in the molars, four to five millimeters are standard for him. And this, but this sample came from a six millimeter? You know, I take it from three different areas. So, you know, it could be a four millimeter, could be a six millimeter. I, I just took it all. It. It in one. What about the overall? Go ahead. Barbara, what about the overall medical history in this person? Um, you know, high blood pressure med and, you know, vitamins and supplements. I get a lot of people in our biological dental office that are on all kinds of supplements. So, so these are generally healthier patients because they, they seek us out. Yeah. They I mean, want to be healthy. That's going to, that's going to wake some people up here when they see this video that, um, <laughs> these are the patients that walk into your office have a very high medical and dental acumen. Yes. And I would imagine a lot of them think they're doing most things right. And that, you know, they're there to, they're there to optimize, not to deal with this. Yeah. Did the patient see this video? Oh, yes. I show every patient from two to 102. Everyone sees their slide. <laughs> that, slide on everyone. I do uh, nutritional microscopy. So I take a drop of blood and I show them their, my, their, their living blood, the red blood cells moving around. Mm -hmm. And that gets patients' attention. I can't imagine being a Seattle resident, taking my supplements and you know, working for my tech company. I go in and see this. Mm -hmm. What was the reaction of the patient? Um, what do I need to do? I want to do it and let's get this on the schedule. And nice. I'm, you know, wh what do I need to do right now? It, it, that I get that from almost everyone. Uh, do you think that there are any general health goals that could be tied to the inflammation that's stoked from this, uh, microbiome misadventure here? I mean, meaning does this person complain of any brain fog or, Weight, uh, wanting to lose weight. You mentioned high blood pressure. Certainly that's an inflammation based yeah. um, disease. You know, not, not that I recall. Okay. So it just, you know, your average 40 something tech guy. And, yeah. And well, an average, average Seattle 40 guy is different than yeah. average Milwaukee. I mean, they're, they are, <laughs> <laughs> but Okay, so you do this 20 minutes elapse, you scroll over to the other side of the slide and you go, you get this. Now, how does this compare to a healthy mouth? You know, um, In a healthy mouth, there's no motility. That's the bottom line and no red blood cells and okay. mostly just cocci. And cocci don't move, they're like little dots. So there are, you know, I can see some, some some smaller cocci on there, but mostly these are just dead spinning rods and gliding rods. So, and then we transfer the, you know, the microbiome changes as they, you know, work with me and do their home care and irrigate with a water pick and, and, you know, I'm changing my protocols. I'm going to have them, you know, squirt biocidin underneath their gums more. And, and I'm also, you know, working with Manuka honey and baking soda. I want to raise the pH. I want to change the microbiome. And then we also have to look at the gut, you know, leaky gut. It all, periodontal disease actually starts with the gut and an autoimmune reaction. So, you know, we can clean and scrape all we want, but if we don't get the rest of the body healthy, the mouth will never be healthy. And that was a great, that's a great line that I just give us a little more on your perspective that periodontal disease begins as an, an, an immune 
disruption from the gut. Um, talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, the, when, with the processed foods we eat, the sugar, the um, flour, the white flour, yeah. those things our body, our, our gut cannot digest. And so it creates what's called leaky gut. And these, these bacteria and food particles go into our blood system and cause an autoimmune reaction. And gum disease and tooth decay are a symptom of that. Well said. And it, I think we can quickly tie in the relationship between um, gut dysbiosis and leaky gut and uh, your risk for dementia. Exactly. We can, tie, oh we can triangulate this number three-ish killer with what you're saying about the gut and gut and mouth. But also, we now, it's pretty well established that when you have this picture, if this were a female, yeah. this puts you at risk for dementia. It absolutely does. You know, this is an inflammation. And you know, they're, they're, these bacteria travel into the brain. You know, spirochetes and porphyromonas gingivalis, the new research shows that gut and oral inflammation the bacteria travel into the brain and contribute to it. Yeah, that's, a, that's an, just amazing. Um, it shouldn't surprise us. The, the head and neck is so well vascularized. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a area of, um, it's a very dynamic interface with, a, with, with bacteria constantly coming in the mouth. And so um, this is not just about having fresher breath. This isn't just about having pink tight gums and a Hollywood smile. Oh no, we yeah, are, no. we're seriously in an era where this woman can be counseled on <laughs> dementia risk reduction through mm -hmm. the use of your protocols. So what was that protocol? What did you send her home with? With a, um, with a hydrofloss, which is an oral irrigator. And, you know, I have her use baking soda water and then I'm using the uh, biocide and just squirting it right into the pockets with a cannula. So, yeah. Now, put is, that, is, and, that, is that reasonable to have them do that? It sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It's, um, it's, a, it's an infection. And we need to treat this infection just like a wound. You know, and if you had a, a wound that was six millimeters deep underneath your skin, you know, you wouldn't just wash your hands. You've got to go in, you've got to disinfect it. And you've got to boost the immune system. You've got to get the right supplements. So, you know, vitamin C, magnesium, um, vitamin D3, vitamin K2. You know, your immune system needs to be stronger. And obviously, you know, with back pathogens like this, we've got, we've got a mess in there. You know, yeah. the immune system's fighting and... We need, to, we need to heal from all the different angles, not just wiping the microbiome out. Yeah. Uh, now, now, we've got good bacteria in. Be, be, before we play into, yeah, be, before we play into the whole health equals declaring war on bacteria uh, motif that my, mm -hmm. my parents grew up with, yeah. I think it's really important to, for us to say, uh, look, bacteria are doing great things in the mouth as well. It's about having the right balance. It's about exactly. modulating the activity, not just the who's present in the oral neighborhood, but how are they being epigenetically influenced to behave poorly uh, or behave like a good citizen there? Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the provocative question here is, if you, if you look at our uh, your video, we go from this densely populated neighborhood with a whole bunch of thugs to a very clean uh, space. And my, the question is, is that too clean? Is, well, did, we, did we overkill? You know, I mean, that's a good question. And I don't know the answer yet. You know, and that's, there's so much we don't know. And every time I do this, like, why don't I know this? And where do I find the information? You know, what's, you know, yeah. there's just so much we don't know. Well, that's why we're here. That's why we love your contributions to the biobotanical space. And I think that it's safe to say to anyone listening to this that 
we are having ongoing discussions um, in a 360 degree fashion about uh, killing and reducing the bad actors, but then understanding how best to repopulate if it's even needed. Yeah. Right. The reality yeah. is this is done in isolation on a slide. Mm -hmm. the, the treatment that you're doing is in, a, is in a mouth that has plenty of other bacterial neighborhoods to pull from to repopulate itself. Mm -hmm. And there's so much cell to cell, microbe to microbe communication happening that we don't understand and yet that I, I'm not sure that we need to fret too much about the repopulation with an oral probiotic per se. Um, but that's the research that we're taking on right now is mm -hmm. when, you, when you take care of the infection, how do we then nurture that healthy neighborhood? Um, and, you know, several companies have, have come out with oral probiotics. There's probiotic toothpaste. But I think it's going to take a collaborative effort between integrative physicians and dentists and you um, and, a, and a company like Biobotanical to really look at and spend some money on what is happening and why it's happening and then come up with protocols that can advance integrative dentistry. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you are uniquely positioned, sister, to make that happen. And we're so excited to have this video. What would you like to do next in terms of Barbara's dental laboratory? You know, what, what, what can we think of to do next as a progression from this particular experiment? Um, I, I guess you're going to re-swab <laughs> her. You're going to recollect. When will you have a, when will you have a repeat um, specimen on her? Um, probably in another two weeks. The, so I sent this patient home with some, uh, the, the liposomal uh, um, biocidin okay. on a cannula. And then the water pick or the hydrofloss with with more irrigation. And so I will check again in two weeks. Okay. So, so that will give me a good three and a half weeks of just her irrigating. All right. Well, let's start there. Two yeah. weeks from now, uh, will you please do another video like this and let's see where we're at? Okay. Um, I, I can do that. And in the meantime, I just want to congratulate you again on your award and thank oh. you for being committed to excellence and not just being, um, not just punching the clock or being a really good hygienist, but you're actually yeah. a researcher. You're a true in the trenches researcher. And well, uh, it's, more it's just exciting. Makes, it's more makes me excited. Yeah. Yeah, makes, heck yeah. 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 And I'm going to, we're going to pick your brain more on some of the uh, home hygiene dental solutions that you've cooked up with your Manuka honey and baking soda and those kinds of things. So more okay. to come with the queen of dental hygiene, all Yay. about the queen. Well, thank you, Adam. It's yeah. been my pleasure. Go it's have an awesome Friday and I'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. You too. Have a great weekend. All right. Bye-bye.